Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video, we're going to be talking about machine learning and artificial intelligence. And we're actually going to be building an app for the iPad that is basically a clone of the popular game Flappy Bird, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. But the difference is that this game is going to be able to teach itself to play and should theoretically be able to go on forever uh, and never die. So this will make use of machine learning and particularly, uh, specifically neural networks, which is something I've recently looked into and got interested in. So I thought this would be a cool video to talk about it. It's not really gonna be a tutorial, um, but I'm just gonna be showing kind of the development of this project as a whole and just talking about some of the things that go into it and stuff like that. So first of all, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about already, uh, neural networks um, are essentially a model that replicate kind of how a human brain works and you can use them in software to essentially solve a problem, but to adapt to solve a problem. They can basically be applied to any problem, but uh, in terms of a visual problem, this is why I'm using Flappy Bird. So if you search on YouTube, Flappy Bird Neural Network, you'll see several videos uh, covering similar things. So also you can do this at other games as well, but Flappy Bird's just a very, very basic, simple one to get started with. And you can see that these videos here basically show uh, a Flappy Bird clone, and then they show the process of training a neural network to play Flappy Bird. So it starts off with having several birds who have no clue what they're doing in the game. They don't know anything about the environment and they don't know the rules of the game. And they basically play and they just jump and die initially. But over time, the birds get smarter and smarter and eventually they can play the game without ever dying. So they just continue forever. Um, and that's what we're gonna be looking at into the, in this video. That's what we're gonna be building for uh, the iPad. So. First of all, for those of you who have not looked at neural networks before, we're gonna look up uh, some quick diagrams so you can actually see how this structured uh, and see basically how they work. So if you search neural network, you'll find the definition, obviously, you can see there, it's modeled on the human brain and nervous system. And if we go on images, you will see various diagrams that look like this. So we have several nodes, which are just these circles, and then we have these lines between the nodes, which are connections. Um, so you have several layers of nodes in a network. So for example, in this network, we have four layers. Um, and then we have an input layer here, which is the green one. We have, in this case, two hidden layers, uh, which are the orange ones. And then we have some output nodes on the, the blue ones. Uh, for the Flappy Bird one that we're gonna be building, I've seen people do this slightly different ways, but for the one, uh, for in, in this example, the way I'm gonna be doing it is I'm gonna have a neural network with three layers. So we're gonna have one input layer, a hidden layer, and an output layer. The input layer will have four nodes, and each of these nodes will be a piece of data that the bird needs to interpret in order to be able to successfully play the game. So these four these four pieces of data will be, first of all, the height of the bird. So how, it's basically the Y uh, position of the bird up, up and down the screen. Uh, then it will be the distance across the screen of the pipe. So the pipe obviously will move. So it will be the X position of the pipe. And then it will be the top and bottom heights of the pipe. So the two pipes, uh, the height of the top one and the height of the bottom one. So that'll be the four inputs. And um, the, the middle layer is gonna have six nodes on it. And then the output layer will only have a single node because all we need to do for this problem is to basically determine whether or not the bird is gonna jump or not. So we don't actually need any, uh, any more than one node because we can have this, uh, this output, if it comes out as more than 0 0.5, then we can say we want the bird to jump, and if not, then it can just not jump, it can stay falling. So one output node is uh, sufficient for this problem. So that's gonna be the structure of the network. Now, if you did actually see my tweet the other day, you would probably know that I've already started building this application, and I've already made significant progress. So I've actually already uh, implemented a neural network class. Uh, so I did this from scratch in Objective-C, now there are lots of libraries out there that you can use um, that have pre-built neural network classes if you want to kind of do it an easier way. Um, I've never really used any of those so I just wanted to build a neural network from scratch uh, in Objective-C to fully understand how it works. So I have all the uh, nodes implemented. The weights between each of the nodes, these are all initially set as a, a random value between minus one and one. And you can just uh, use these, you can use this class in your in your program to create a neural network. So for example, the player, uh, we have this player class here. This is essentially the bird of the game. Uh, and this will have a brain a property on it, which is a neural network. So the bird's brain is an instance of the neural network class. And you can see here, when we actually create an instance of the player, we set the brain of the, of the uh, bird equal to a new instance of a neural network. 
and I've set this up so that you can uh, initialize it with amounts of nodes per layer. So here you can see I've got four nodes on the layer one, which is the input layer, six nodes on layer two, and one output node. So this will create an, uh, an instance of a neural network with this amount of nodes on the layers. And by default, that's gonna randomize the weights. And then obviously throughout the progression of the game, you can update the input nodes with set values depending on um, the inputs that you want. So you can see here, this is how I've done this. Inputs, uh, so you can see the, the height of the bird, the uh, position, the X position of the pipe, and then the top and bottom pipe heights. And that constantly uh, gets updated. Those, those values get updated every time the bird moves, essentially. So it's happening multiple times a second. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's currently the progress I've got. So at the moment, the app actually, it runs, it'll have the Fluffy Bird game implemented. It will spawn uh, several hundred birds, each with a random neural network initialized. So then the birds are essentially guessing how to play the game. So if the output node of their network comes out as 0 0.5 or higher, then they will jump. If not, then they'll continue to fall. So I'm gonna quickly show you a demo uh, on the iPad itself of how this works so far. I haven't implemented any kind of genetic algorithm yet, which is what we're gonna to get to later on. And that's gonna actually allow them to learn how to play the game. But for now, it just generates random uh, birds with random neural networks in their brains. So they kind of have no clue what they're doing. All right, so I've got the app installed on my iPad here. It's called Neural Flappy Bird. And this is what it looks like when you open it up. So you can see we have the Flappy Bird game on the left side of the screen and uh, this is just replicating the original Flappy Bird game. The rules are basically exactly the same. Obviously the graphics are not really there, but I just threw this together quite quickly. And then on the right side of the screen, we have a bigger area where we have some controls as well as a neural network visualizer. So this kind of helps you understand neural networks if you have not really looked at them before. And you can actually see this live update as the game uh, progresses. So first of all, you can see we have a slider here to choose how many birds you want to spawn per generation. So um, we're gonna just, set a thousand for the sake of this so you can see uh, as many as possible and then we're going to click this start button and what this is going to do is it's going to generate 1000 birds each with their own brains which is essentially a neural network and each of those neural networks is going to be randomly initialized with weight values that are all going to be different from each other so all of these birds are going to have completely different brains uh, the inputs for the birds will obviously be the same apart from their height after they've begun jumping but the because the brains are wired differently the the way they act in response to these inputs is going to actually be different so for some of the birds they're going to choose to jump some of them are going to choose to not jump and over time uh, as we'll see later on as we actually implement the uh, genetic algorithm to actually kind of evolve these birds they will get progressively smarter so we're just going to run it first of all and see how many of these 1000 birds make it through the pipe and uh yeah we'll go from there so we're going to click start so you can see we have several different birds at the moment they're just colored boxes and you can see the amount of birds that are left. So only three birds have made it through the first pipe and there's two left and now they're all dead and then the new generation starts. So this is essentially all I've implemented at the moment. You can see the neural network values uh, live update on the actual diagram there. You can see them quickly updating and that is essentially all that's been implemented. So that is um, the way it's gonna work per generation. So when I've actually implemented the genetic algorithm, uh, that's gonna, you, you generate a series of birds, a thousand birds, they progress, they play, whoever survives the longest, uh, you use that bird or use those two birds or whatever to kind of generate a new generation of birds, kind of like natural selection uh, in biology. So that's how it's gonna evolve. So over however many generations, the birds will progressively get smarter because they'll be regenerated using the weights of the most successful bird. So obviously they won't be exactly the same. They won't be clones of that successful bird, They'll also be mutated a little bit to give some more randomization so that they can then progress even further. So we're gonna quickly look up the genetic algorithm just so I can show you guys what this all is. So genetic algorithm, and we'll type in neural networks because we want it specifically applied to that. Uh, and you can see this link here, which I've already been on recently. Um, so this will explain roughly what the genetic algorithm is, or at least I'm hoping so. so so how do genetic algorithms work? Here are five, oh, sorry, six steps that basically show this process. So first of all, we create a population of randomly generated members, which has already been implemented, as I just showed you guys. So we generate a thousand birds, each with random brains. Then we score each member of the population based on some goal, and this is known as the fitness function. So in the case of Flappy Bird, the fitness function of a bird is gonna be 
how well it does at the game. So how many pipes it made, makes through before it dies. So that will be, for example, in the last example, I think they made it through two pipes. So that would be two for those last surviving birds. Then what we do is we select the most um, fit birds and we breed them to create a new generation, which, as I said, we use their genes, essentially, what's basically their weights in their neural network. We use these weights to generate another generation of birds who have not random brains this time, but brains based off of the most successful brain. So again, it won't be exactly the same. There'll be some mutations. You can see at the next step, mutate some, some members randomly to attempt to find even better candidates. So this is how natural selection works in biology. You have random genetic mutations and the, the, those, those genes result in new characteristics forming. And obviously the more preferable characteristics in terms of playing the game are the ones we want to keep. Then we kill off the rest and we repeat that step until uh, we find a perfect generation or a perfect bird to play the game. So that's essentially the kind of a high level uh, method of how these genetic algorithms work. So we use breeding where we take two members of a population and generate one or more child where that child represents a combination of its parents. So just again within biology, the genes are kind of crossed over to create a new gene, a new gene pattern for this new bird. And then it's gonna have a kind of a mixture of both characteristics from the parents. So here's a post on stackoverflow.com and this gives you kind of tips on how to actually uh, genetically mutate the weights of a neural network. So here you can see it says, uh, swap either single weights or all weights for a given neuron in the network. Um, we can swap an entire layer's weights and then for the mutation, we can completely replace it with a random value. So one of the weights, we could just change that completely to a random value. We can change the weight by some percentage. So it's kind of slightly adjusted either up or down. Uh, subtract, add or subtract a value between zero and one. Change the sign of a weight. So it goes from negative to positive or positive to negative. And uh, swap weights on a single neuron. So there's various different ways. The idea is basically just kind of randomize it a little bit while still keeping some kind of basis from the parent, so some kind of uh, inheritance from the parent. So we're gonna try and implement this in code now to see how this actually goes. Uh, this is my first time doing this on video, so I'm not actually too sure how this is gonna work, but let's get started. So I think what we're gonna need is two arrays. I'm just gonna create two NS mutable arrays, and these are gonna be the best layer one weights and the best layer two weights. So basically we're just gonna store the weights from each, uh, each, the best bird essentially into here. So we have layer one weights by that, I mean the, the weights between layer one and the middle layer, and layer two weights is the second layer of weights, so the weights between the middle layer and the output layer. So we're gonna basically initialize these at the end of a generation, so once the player dies, or once the last player dies, uh, this restart function is automatically called, which kind of generates the next, um, next generation. Now at the moment, this is obviously still doing another random generation of birds, which we no longer want. We want the second generation to be um, slightly evolved. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna check if these arrays have been yet initialized, and if not, then obviously that's the first generation, so we generate randomly, but if they have been initialized, then we're gonna to need to implement a new function into the neural network class that's gonna allow us to kind of have some influence over the weights that are being uh, applied to the network, because by default, they're always just random. All right, so what we're gonna do is down here at the bottom of the restart function, we're going to, um, well, as I said, we're going to check if the, uh, the best layer one weights array is nil. So we're going to check if they're both nil. And if they are, then obviously this is the first generation. And therefore, we just want to spawn the random bird. So we'll use, we'll just copy this for loop here, which basically um, loops around the amount of times for the slider value. And then it will create players using the default create player method, which I implemented already. And that's the one that creates them with randomly initialized values. Now, if that's not the case, so we want an else here, then we're going to do the same loop. But this time we're going to implement a new create player method that's going to have a create player with weights method. So we can actually have some influence over what weights they have. Now, copy this create player method and we'll call it create player with weights. And we'll take in NS mutable array. Okay, so this method is now going to take in two NS mutable arrays. All right, so I'm just thinking it's probably gonna be easier to start with the actual neural network class. So we're gonna need a new initializer method for the neural network so that we can add the, the weights that we already know. So um, we're just gonna 
actually we don't need a new initializer, we'll just have a method that allows us to set the weights ourselves. So at the moment we've got two getters for the get layer one weights, get layer two weights. We'll just have two new methods, so we'll want set layer one weights and set layer two weights. So these are going to both allow us to simply set the weights for these layers. And of course these are both going to need to take in uh, an inestimable array of weights. Right, so that's the way of setting the weights. So, uh, we can call these from within our player class now and we're going to need a method that basically allows us to update the brain of the player. So we're just going to have void uh, update. And again, we're going to need to take in, uh, let's say with player one weights. And then it'll be self dot brain and we can call set layer one weights with L1 and then the same thing for layer two. All right, so now we have a way to update the weights uh, in the neural network of the players of each one. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be responsible for, uh, sorry, the view controller class is gonna be responsible for doing the mutations and everything like that. Now I probably will implement this into the actual neural network itself so that you can use this for other problems in the future because that's the way you kind of would want it. You'd want the neural network class to have a mutate function that you can just call that will do this all for you. But um, yeah, I've not really planned this project. I'm kind of just going at it. So that's why we're not doing it that way. And so we call that there in the create player with layer one weights, we call update player brain and we just pass both of those arrays in. Uh, by the way, this probably would be a lot more efficient if I just use pure C arrays for this, for all of the kind of uh, weights and neuron stuff. But for whatever reason, when I started this out, I just did it all with NS mutable arrays. So Obviously that's very uh, inefficient compared to just pure C, but I'll probably rewrite this at some point. Um, but again, this is not really about the actual, the code is just about the kind of logic of understanding these neural networks and stuff like that. So, um, okay, so here we're gonna be, obviously create, we're gonna call that function with our, uh, both of our layer one and layer two weights. And these are gonna need to be slightly mutated, but based off of the best or the most fittest player. So what we're gonna do is we actually need a way obviously to determine who is the fittest player. And as I already mentioned, that's gonna be based on how far they make it through the game. So the, basically the last one surviving is gonna be the fittest one. So if we go down here to where we actually check the kind of collision with the, the bird in the pipes or the, uh, the up and bottom of the screen, then inside here, we can actually basically constantly be updating these best um, weights arrays to correspond with the current best player. Now, obviously at the start, all the players are kind of equal because they're all gonna be alive for a certain amount of time. And obviously as time goes through, multiple ones may be at the same score. So we're just gonna constantly update it until they're all dead essentially. So um, best layer one weights, we're gonna set that equal to uh, p dot brain, and then we'll get layer one uh, weights up there. And then the same for layer two. And so that's gonna basically continue. And then once all the birds are dead, it's gonna call self uh, restart um, and these, these arrays will be left with whatever the last bird was essentially. So that will be the, the best weights. And so we'll do a quick check to make sure that actually did work. So we're gonna set the um, the weights to the best layer weights, but for all of the birds. So we won't do any mutation. We just wanna quickly check if this actually, um, it should, it, so basically it should do one random generation of a thousand birds. And then the second, the second generation should be all the same weights. They should all have the exact same brain as that best bird from the last round. So we will click play and run this onto the iPad and I'll show you guys what goes on here. So we're gonna set again a thousand birds for the first generation. So you can see they're all again, very random. And once they all die, you can see now they all stay in kind of one single block because they're all got the exact, exact same weights. So they're jumping at the exact same time as each other. So that does confirm that uh, it works what we, what we just tried to do there. So we have, um, We've been able to adjust the weight values of the second generation. Now, obviously what we need to do to allow it to progress and evolve even further, we need to mutate these weights or change them slightly so that they're not all exactly the same because we still want the birds to be different. We still want to act different. Otherwise there's no more uh, evolution for it. So we're gonna need to um, implement some way of slightly adjusting these. We need to keep them based on these weights. We don't wanna change them too drastically because then they'll go back to being random. Uh, we just want to change some of them as well. We need Some of them can stay the same and some of them will be slightly mutated. Now thinking about it again, I'm actually going to go back on what I said earlier. I am going to implement the mutate function into the neural network because it just makes a lot more sense. So this will happen automatically when you set the weights. It's going to automatically mutate them 
um, and or keep some of them the same, but it'll mutate some of them. So inside both of these methods here, where we set the layer one weights and set the layer two weights, we're going to have a similar section of code. It's going to loop through the weights. So we're going to we're going to have a for loop here that is um, layer one weights. So I will be less than layer one weights dot count uh, count, and we'll increment that. And then we're going to go through, we're going to make a decision. So we'll have some kind of random number generator that's going to decide whether or not we're going to mutate this weight. And then if we are, we're going to kind of um, adjust the weight slightly so that the value of it changes a little bit. So we'll create a random number. So we'll use um, arc for random. It's probably the easiest way to do this. So actually we'll do a random number between 0 and 2. So we'll use this as a 30% chance, 33% chance. So if the, the value of the random number... Uh, oops. If the value of the random number is, uh, let's say, zero. So if the random number comes out to be zero, then this is a 33% chance of happening. So what we will do here is we will randomize whatever current weight we're on. So that'll be index i. So we'll do layer one weights, uh, replace object at index um, with object. So index will be i, and then the object this will just be an uh, NS number float with value, no, sorry, number with float. And then this float, we're actually gonna have another random number between minus one and one, just as we randomized them initially when we created the first neural networks. Also, we'll just copy and we'll put that in there. So what this code basically does to recap again, we loop through all of the weights in the layer one weights, and then 33% of the time, we're going to replace one of the weights with a random value, so a completely random value, just as we would generate random values initially with the original neural network. So this function is going to be exactly the same as in uh, the layer twos as well. So we can copy this, obviously making sure to change the reference from layer one to layer two. So this is kind of a basic form of mutation. Now I've not actually experimented with this yet, so I don't know how well this is going to work, if it's going to work at all, or if uh, the, the probability of replacing the values is too high or too low. So we're going to see that in a minute and i'll probably implement a better way of doing um mutation because obviously this is just completely randomizing one of the things whereas this stack overflow page did say that uh, you can adjust the weight slightly or swap two weights swap the positions of two weights so there are probably different ways and better ways of doing this but for now for the first kind of mutation tests we're just going to completely randomize a few of the weights in the network so roughly 33 percent of them so there were a few things in that code that need, needed clearing up, uh, which I've now done. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna run this now on the iPad. So I've got it connected, we're gonna click play. All right, so here we are with uh, the iPad. Um, so what we're gonna do is select a thousand birds again, as we did on the first go. Start, and again, it's gonna do the first random generation. And then what we should see is that they are getting progressively smarter now. So we're gonna run that with the thousand bird generation. Some of them are going to survive. You can see there we've got one bird left. And then when this bird dies, we're going to generate another generation with uh, weights based off of that first bird. Now, it kind of doesn't exactly improve too well at the moment. Uh, that may be to do with the method of crossover or the method of the genetic implementation I've used. But um, over time, hopefully, I'm going to be able to improve this. So I'm going to give it another try. Put it on the second generation. And you can see a lot more birds did make it through. You see nine birds made it through that time. So there is some evidence of improvement. Um, but yeah, obviously this is probably not sufficient to uh, actually allow the bird to completely train itself to know how to play that game. But that is the basic, um, or at least a good start with the genetic algorithm at least I think, because uh, that's the first time I've actually played around with that. So I'm probably going to have a second part of this video at some point, maybe next week if I um, implement a better genetic algorithm to actually get the bird to improve um, in a more efficient way and a lot faster and hopefully I can get a way of uh, hopefully I can get a, a scenario where the bird actually learns to play the game flawlessly and can theoretically go on forever so yeah anyway I hope you guys um, found this video interesting it wasn't really a tutorial as I said at the beginning but just thought it'd be interesting to kind of show the development progress on this and it's a very new topic because I've never covered this on the channel Neural networks, something I'm very new to, and um, I'm sure many of you guys may already be more familiar with this than I am. Um, if so, then leave any comments on how to Im implement a genetic algorithm in a more efficient way than I've just done. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more, and I will see you next time.